Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on when you're viewing this video. Welcome to Virtual Curriculum Night at Groom Junior High, and in particular, your child's sixth grade English language arts classroom. A little bit about me. My name is Becca Bromley Adamitis, and this is my sixth year teaching at Grove Junior High, although it's my 20th year of teaching in total. I've taught at various grade levels at two different schools. I hold a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Illinois State University, a master's in administration from Roosevelt University, and a master's in literacy from Judson University. And I'm also actually currently a doctoral candidate studying to earn my doctorate in literacy from Judson University in May of 2023. By now you have seen the schedule that was shared out with students where this year for junior high, we are splitting their day into two a green day and a gold day. Green day will run the odd number periods, gold day will run the even number of periods. We benefit from that as an English language arts department because that means we get to meet with your student each and every day. So I feel super lucky for that. So what will that time that we're meeting together look like? Our class periods run a total of 50 minutes each day. 50 minutes on a green day and 50 minutes on a gold day. In English language arts, we do utilize the reading and writing workshop model, meaning typically our day will start with a minute lesson on a concept. We'll spend some time practicing that concept together, and then students will be sent off to do some independent practice and possibly meet together in small groups. So there's a blend here of a whole class instruction, small group instruction, there may be partner time, or there may be time when they are working independently. The benefit of this is that when students are broken into small groups or partners or even independently, I can offer more individualized attention to what they might be working on, questions they might have, or something that they might need my assistance for. What are we going to be learning this year? Obviously this year looks a little bit different than perhaps years in the past have looked, but we are going to try to keep the structure as um, similar as possible. Our first quarter, we are going to be focusing on obviously settling them into junior high school, learning about what it means to be a junior high student, and then really start to build their agency and independence in reading and writing. We're also going to spend a little bit of time focusing on a couple of the units that they were to have covered in fifth grade that maybe the teachers didn't have a chance to do due to moving to a remote setting um, in March. Then we'll move on to focusing on characters, writing personal narratives, we do a study of nonfiction text where the students then do an informational writing piece. And we end the year talking about and looking at different social issues and following that up with a literary essay. In addition to these units of study, we'll also be working on grammar and writing skills, utilizing a program called No Red Ink and we'll also be spending time focusing on word study, and in particular, STEM words. One of the unique things about starting junior high is that we, students and you will now have access to a program called Skyward, which is an online gradebook system. You are able to check Skyward, as well as your student able to check Skyward at any time to be able to see if they're missing any assignments or just as a general check of their progress. Grades in our class will be based on formative assessments, summative assessments, independent reading, and their homework or classwork completion. 
Homework and classwork completion might also include active participation in our online lessons during synchronous learning. We reviewed expectations with your students, but I just wanted to give a quick glimpse into what some of our expectations are as far as the times that we are meeting together. I will be utilizing Zoom to hold my meetings. And during that time, I do want students to be able to follow some general expectations. Just like if we were in class, it's important for them to be on time to our meeting. I understand that we're gonna have technical difficulties from time to time, but for the most part, we want to try to honor that class start time. So logging in a few minutes early is a great idea. We ask that students try to be in a quiet place, free from distractions, if at all possible. And so far, your students are doing an amazing job with that. Being prepared means having a fully charged Chromebook, as well as having headphones. It really helps to limit distractions on the student's end and allows them to focus a little bit easier. For presentation, we would love to see students getting up and getting ready, just like it was a normal school day. Um, we try to encourage, you know, the change out of the pajamas while we're getting ready for our school day. We do ask that your students mute themselves in order for us to be able to hear the teacher speaking or for only having one student speaking at a time. Participation is an ongoing conversation, but the general idea around participation is that students are focused, they're paying attention, and if and when students are asked to offer feedback or an answer, sometimes I'll have them answering questions in the chat. We want them to realize that they need to be paying attention to be able to um, actively participate in answering any questions. We've talked about the chat being used responsibly and that we're treating that chat like a classroom discussion. Therefore, if the teacher is talking, we're not going to have conversations taking place between students in the chat. Speaking clearly, looking up when speaking and staying on topic and limiting those side conversations is super important. And last but not least, and probably one of my biggest expectations is that we are respectful of one another. I do my very best to show students respect at all times, and I ask that they show each other respect as well. We are fortunate in English Language Arts and at Grove Junior High that we have a few different ways for students to have access to books. Typically, we would have our school library available to them, as well as I have a huge classroom library that unfortunately we're not able to access right now. However, Mrs. Wittrone in the library has done an amazing job providing students with different ways to access books this year. We have Access 360, which our students have access to, which is a variety of ebooks and audiobooks. Sora is an, a variety of uh, over 350 uh, ebooks that they have access to as well. If your student holds an Elk Grove Village Public Library card, they can access the digital books that way also. We are considering programs like Epic and News ELA to just provide more opportunities for your students to put eyes on text. But our Grove LRC has done an amazing job also setting up curbside pickup. So just like all of your favorite restaurants that you can go to for curbside pickup, Grove is offering curbside pickup as well. Students will use a program on their computer called Destiny Discovery, where they can see all of the books that are housed in our library and they can put those books on hold. Students are able to put up to four books on hold and can have those books for up to four weeks. What happens is a student puts a book on hold. Once that book becomes available, a student receives an email letting them know their books are available. At that time, you or another responsible driver from home would come to Grove Junior High to door number three, which is the door that is kitty corner from Queen of the Rosary Church, anytime, Monday through Friday, between 8 and 
you would call when you arrived and the students have been given that number to call to phone the LRC to let them know that you're outside. I've also posted that number here. There are two different lines, so if you don't get an answer at one, always try the other one. The books will then be delivered outside to you without you having to get out of your car, either in the trunk or in the back seat. And again, students can keep those books for up to four weeks. We're super excited that we're able to offer this option for students to have books to read at all times. So hopefully um, a lot of students will take advantage of that. What can you do to help your child this year? For English language arts, we would love to see you encouraging your student to read at least 20 minutes each night. We ask for a total of about two hours during the week. So that would be six out of the seven days reading 20 minutes a night. You might have a student that reads more than that and that is wonderful. But for those students who might be more reluctant readers, we're asking for that encouragement to try to read at least 20 minutes a night. We would love for you to try to have conversations with your students about what they're reading. Ask them to tell you about their book or tell you what they're learning about. Engaging in those conversations can be so useful and help the students get excited about what it is that they're reading. We ask for your help to help them stay organized, to maintain any supplies that they might need, and especially that reminder to charge the Chromebook every night so that they can participate in the online sessions. Being on Zoom, I know most, you know, a good part of the day drains your battery quickly. So keeping that Chromebook charged is super important. We also ask that you help monitor their grades in Skyward and look for assignments that might be missing or assignments that might be late and just encourage them to be completing their work on time. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, I have a completely open line of communication. I welcome questions, I welcome comments, um, suggestions, I am all ears in anything that I can do to help partner with you to make this the best year possible for your student. So that being said, there's two ways to contact me. Email is probably the quickest and most efficient, but I've also set up a Google Voice number that I can be reached at via phone call or text message, and I will try to respond to your question as soon as possible. I am so excited to get to work with your students this year. I can't wait to make it the very best year possible. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to co contact me at any time. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to working with your students this year.